Now, more information is coming out about Joel Couchy, the 40-year-old Queensland man who carried out the horrific Bondi Junction attack over the weekend, killing six people. He was known to Queensland and New South Wales police for mental health-related matters. They say his attack on Saturday had no links to any religion or uh, political ideology. Joel's parents have said he was diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was 17. He'd been medicated but came off it recently because he said he was feeling better. Uh, Claire, this case has sparked new discussions about the state of mental health care in this country. What are the resources that are available for people with schizophrenia and are they readily available uh, for people who want treatment and are they affordable? Yeah, so they are readily available. We've got, like many other things, uh, two options, being the public system or private. And obviously, if you go into private care, whether that be inpatient or outpatient, it can be very costly for those that can afford it. But there is there is uh, patient care for those with psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia in the public system. Um, again, you know, that involves things like cons consults with a psychiatrist, uh, pharmacological medication, um, as, long, as well as psychological intervention. So that is available in the public system. I think, I think the question here is more to say being mentally unwell, having a psychiatric disorder is not illegal and Unless you are scheduled under the Mental Health Act, of which there is several reasons that you can schedule someone, that is, hold them against their will uh, and treat them, uh, um, namely they have made threats against other people's lives or their own. Um, but unless unless they do that, unless you can hold them against their will, you can't force someone into treatment. And that is, you know, a human right, and that that is a whole ethical question in itself. If you have a diagnosis of schizophrenia, should we make it illegal that you don't, you know, take medication? And that's going to be very hard to police. And we know with psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia, the symptoms can be quite um, focused in a what we call a period of psychosis. So, so that can be days or weeks uh, where you have those delusions and paranoia. But but people can go for months, if not years, without symptoms. And so in those periods, there is a danger that they will start feeling better and they will stop taking medication. Now, that is more of the question. And I, and I understand the public's need to want to kind of see the, the chink in the system to say, aha, here it is. And if we mm. fix that, Bondi won't happen again. But, you know, uh, presumably this person, like many others, does, did not appear presenting with someone making threats that they were going to kill people. Otherwise, that would have been a very clear reason to detain them and, and hold them against their will. But um, when they don't do that and they're feeling OK, they they have a legal right to go off medication. It's it's not what's advised. But we can't force someone into treatment. And, and therein lies probably the bigger question and the problem. Now, before you go, um, I want to ask you about marijuana use and uh, serious psychological conditions because there is a global trend uh, in the West to decriminalise marijuana for personal use. But is that risking the psychiatric disorders uh, becoming considerably worse and people suffering psychotic breaks? Uh, potentially, yes. So we know that the... Well, I understand the argument to decriminalising cannabis use uh, is to make it more open, potentially safer use of it, um, and of course reducing, you know, the backlog in, in legal repercussions. But yes, we know that there's such thing as called, you know, cannabis-induced psychosis, uh, um, and that's characterised by symptoms of uh, mm -hmm. paranoia, it's very much like schizophrenia, and we know. We've known for a very long time that there's evidence suggesting that ongoing use of cannabis is going to exacerbate any individuals who have some type of vulnerability to mental health already. So, yes, cannabis use can absolutely induce um, psychiatric episodes, psychiatric disorders. So if we are going to make this argument that it needs to be decriminalised, we absolutely need to have the conversation. Well, uh, does the public health system now need a whole heap of more money to be enhanced to do with potentially yes. an increase in cannabis-induced psychiatric conditions? Yeah, and I don't see that conversation happening at the moment. 
No, we're not seeing that compensation at all. Claire Rowe, thank you so much for your insights this evening. Thanks, Rita.